Hello and welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. I uh, told you the other day that I love batteries, so I decided to create my own prototype battery. I'm gonna call this my Solo Cup Dirt Battery. Uh, just a simple, simple primary battery. Uh, what is a primary battery? A primary battery is a battery that can discharge but cannot be recharged. It uses chemical reactions, galvanic reactions to produce energy. Um, and I'm charging a secondary battery, which is a lithium battery. That is a 3.7 volt lithium battery. And a secondary battery can be charged and discharged. It's rechargeable. So it's a 3.7 volt cell. It's been sitting like this for a few days. Um, just got the battery with some electrical tape around it and a couple of pieces of aluminum foil with the alligator clips to the battery. Uh, this is the negative side of the battery. That's the positive side. Uh, pretty simple, apocalypse proof battery. You know, it doesn't give, deliver a lot of current, which is just, it's dirt and some junk in there. And I'll show you, I'll deconstruct one of these cells before the end of the video. But I've been charging this for a few days. Uh, when it first started, it was close to a milliamp. We'll check now after everything's been reacting in there. Um, and the electrolyte's just water and no, no solid or anything like that. It can be modified. So not going into full depth on the whole... Uh, homemade battery thing today just kind of a proof of concept to show you uh stuff you can make with things laying around so hopefully you can you can take something in today's video and maybe construct your own dirt battery play around with it because this is simple stuff laying around that will give you energy i mean this is real energy i've used dirt to charge a lithium battery so i'm going to power up a radio with the battery or hopefully power it up um that's most of the way charged you know i was trying to get it 3.7 but um you know that's close enough to uh, to power up something hopefully i'm going to power up this radio right here um no batteries in it and that lithium battery was down to like 0 0.08 of a volt it was flat i hadn't used the radio in a year so uh i guess there's no time like the present let's see if we can uh we can power up the radio and there's the meter fixing to shut off so let me flip it back over get it back on so we can uh you can see that one more time 3.483 so i will take the battery off you have to excuse the uh rigging but hey it works we'll take measurements all that here in just a minute just a zip tie and some tape and tin foil stuff like that not too uh not too expensive to make this you can just you know have some fun with it. that's why i'm showing you this you can kind of play around and get some ideas of how uh, batteries and energy and things like that work so let me get back right here in front of you so let's see here i've got the of course got the solar panel taped up so we don't skew any any of the results that we got right there sweet that's awesome i can't believe it charged it up enough to it's even got the backlight on sweet um let's see here. let's turn this thing on let's see listen to am what you want to listen to let's even pick up any shortwave um on here because that would be a survival situation. We'll be looking for shortwave signals. And of course, I ain't got the antenna up because I'm taped up right there. So let's see if we can pick up anything. If not, we'll go to AM or FM just to prove proof of concept. That's pretty cool that it that it charged up enough to keep a... Uh... Wow, it's still got the backlight on and everything. That's awesome. Really awesome. Oh, anything on that one? Let's see if we go up a little bit more. Probably get somebody in Mexico or China on here. I'm trying to dial somebody in. Let's go back to let's go back to AM. Scan AM. There we go. all right so it works um well i don't want to drain it back down because i'm gonna put it back on and let it top off but let's see if the light works too oh man yep okay let me take it back out so i don't drain it down too much so i'm gonna let it charge all up 3.7 so uh wow that's that's pretty cool which i don't know if you noticed during that clip if you see the voltage on this meter right there you see it come up i took the load off of the sails so the voltage came back up because i've just got the leads i've got them stuck in the alligator clips we could read across the battery for a demonstration to see if the battery was fully charged but see 
6.93 volts coming out of the dirt battery, which is pretty cool. That's like 0.9 and change per cell. So, uh, you know, nice proof of concept charging a lithium battery with dirt. So now I'll take a cell loose. I'll show you the voltage on the cell. We'll deconstruct, I'll deconstruct the cell uh, and show you what's inside so you can get a, an idea if you want to make one on your own to play around with. And I don't know if I mentioned in the first part or not, but you could, you could parallel this together. Well, hold on a second. Before I do that, let's get a milliamp reading off this. All right, hopefully you can see that display. If not, I'll zoom in. So I took the, this one's not sensitive enough to read read the low milliamps. I pulled out the other, the other meter here so we could read the milliamps off of the cell before I break one apart and show you what's going on. I still got the Klein reading voltage across the, across the leads coming off the battery. So we're gonna use the B-Shap to uh, get a milliamp reading and see what she makes. Can you see that? I knocked one of my leads off on the Klein, so let me find out where that went to. Nope, it just drug it all the way down. So that's full, full power right there. We dropped our DC voltage down to 0.9, so I drug all the cells down because the B-Shap is pulling pulling the a full current read on it. So 0 0.58 uh, milliamps. Now when it first started, it was like 0 0.9 milliamps, a little higher. So that means some of my uh, anode or cathode materials already corroded or weathered away. But uh, still, I mean, that's not a lot. It's not a lithium, you know, but I mean, for, for what it is, that's that's pretty cool. Now when I take the B-Shap off, we should have our voltage pop back up uh, over here. There we go. I see it was dragging, it was dragging down the, the voltage of the battery was putting such a load on it. So back up to six volts, it'll climb back up because we're just using dirt. We don't have a, a, a true separator. We're just using the resistance of the earth or the dirt in there as our separator. So it'll climb back up. Watch out for a second. Then I'll deconstruct one of the cells for you. I'm gonna take one off the end so I can put it back together and keep charging that lithium battery. Just some junk wire laying around. I'm gonna reposition you on the camera in a minute before I tear this down so I don't get dirt all over my meters and stuff. I just wanted to show you, uh, let me get a voltage reading on this single cell right here. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed me wiring out that lead off like it was a, like it was a real battery, but habits die hard. Like that thing is gonna do anything. But, once you do stuff often enough, it just is a habit, and that's what happens. It just becomes second nature to to do certain things when you're messing with electricity. So let's see what this one cell is. Let me see if you can see that. 0.932 of a volt on one cell. So not too bad for one cell. So I'll move you now, and then uh, tear this battery apart and show you what's, what's in it. One more thing before I tear it apart of course you want a demonstration with some light see it yep it lights the led of course we would expect it to see that so here's one of the cells i got a little hole cut right there so water can drain out uh, so it doesn't flood it because you get too much water and it saturates water it shorts the the cell internally because there's no resistance in the earth so you got to have a drain so your saturation levels, you know, it doesn't get too saturated with water. Can't let it get too dry either. Um, and there's a lot of theories on this, whether it's the microbes going between the anode and cathode, or if it's just a galvanic reaction, or if there's telluric currents and all this jazz, but I'm gonna just assume it's a galvanic reaction due to the anode and cathode choice. So I'll dump everything out and I'll show you the cell construction. There's everything. Solo cup, nothing, no funny business. Piece of PV wire, and I spread it out to make better contact with the soil. Just a piece of 10 gauge PV cable, nothing fancy. And the more you spread it out, if you make like a duck's foot on the bottom, it'll do, you can see where it had a duck's foot down near the bottom, separated it from the uh, zinc on that fencing. But see right there, the more you spread it out, the more points of contact it can make and the better it is. And just a piece of hardware cloth, which that's steel, that's galvanized steel. So we're using the zinc right here. 
uh, which is a very thin layer. So I stuck a rod of pure zinc in there or something or lead or carbon, uh, it would do a lot better. This is just you know, a piece of old junk wire laying around. You can see it's still, it's still shiny. It's not corroded too much. So uh, that battery would make, would probably make that current for months and months and months until this started, the zinc was gone. It started going back to iron. It would still make current, uh, but not as much, but just, you know, just a little piece of hardware cloth. And for scale, so I had it on one side like that. And then the, the copper was on, was on the opposite side. You know, like that right there. So copper uh, cathode here, zinc anode here, and then fill it up with some dirt. Uh, you can try it with, you know, pot and mix, or you can use dirt out of the woods. Uh, mineralized soil uh, would work better. It's kind of what I had, just some, had a little bit of limestone mixed with red clay, but, uh, you know, just a simple little uh, thing to play around with. So I hope you may have learned something today from this video. Um, you know, get out there and give it a try. Experiment with different, different cathodes and anodes. You like more of this stuff, let me know because I can do the earth battery. I can do tree batteries. I can do all kind of cool stuff if this kind of thing you like. Just let me know. And, uh, you know, appreciate y'all watching today. If you don't mind, if I hope I earned it from you, hope I earned a like. If you hit that like button, it really helps the, helps the channel out and uh, gets, you know, gets us on the algorithm a little better and uh, helps me be able to create more content. So I appreciate y'all watching the Aqua Mountain Homestead. Questions put in the comment section. Hope you have a wonderful day.